Hi, Judy Harris again, and now it's just a few days before we gather together either in person or online in real time for the conference in Santiago in Chile in late July 2012. I've been asked to prepare a summary and response to some of the main ideas that have been posted during the last couple of weeks in our virtual communications with each other on the Telefonica website. Although there were many ideas that were quite worthy of reflection, there were two themes across a number of those ideas that emerged for me as I participated in the conversation. By the way, with the much appreciated help of the translators at Telefonica, who both translated the main ideas that you expressed as you wrote them in Spanish so that I could understand them and also translated my responses for you so you could read them in Spanish if you so chose. So the two ideas that emerged for me as particularly important to explore were the ideas of technology integration using technologies to help students learn curriculum-based content and processes, and educational reform. Now, these two ideas have been associated with each other pretty much since the beginning of our use of digital tools and resources, specifically computers, in classrooms in the late 1970s and early 1980s. So in some ways, I wasn't surprised that these two ideas emerged as closely intertwined in our discussion. But seeing how these particular ideas were framed was particularly intriguing to me and made me wish to comment upon the contrasts and relationships between those two ideas between using technologies for students learning and therefore teachers teaching and the notions of educational reform and how educational reform can be supported by educational technologies. So to frame this particular response to those related ideas, I'd like to suggest that we begin with an analogy, the analogy of magic. As teachers, we witness magic almost every day that we work with our students and watch our students working with each other. This magic that I'll call real magic is the magic of the learning and teaching process, the magic of connection and collaboration to help all of us, teachers and students alike, to realize new things and new ways of doing things. But typically how we think about magic is as a performance, as a feat of illusion, a trick of the hand, um, a form of um, deception, as a matter of fact. So performed magic that's often done with the assistance of digital tools is really illusion. Uh, magicians, for example, like David Copperfield, call themselves illusionists. They do not choose to call themselves magicians. So performed magic, as opposed to the kinds of magic that we witness in the classroom, performed magic is illusion. It is deception. And there's an excellent example of this from a TED Talk from 2011 done by magician and illusionist Marco Tempest. I'm going to play this brief talk for you now and ask that as you're watching and listening, please think about what you focused upon did you focus upon the technological magic more, or did you focus upon the content of this particular talk, the message that Marco Tempest is trying to communicate? 
and after the talk is over, we'll come back and discuss this. <laughs> So the type of magic I like, and I'm a magician, is a magic that uses technology to create illusion. So I would like to show you something I've been working on. It's an application that I think will be useful for artists, multimedia artists in particular. It synchronizes videos across multiple screens of mobile devices. And I borrowed these three iPods from people here in the audience to show you what I mean. And I'm going to use them to tell you a little bit about my favorite subject, deception. One of my favorite magicians is Carl Germain. He had this wonderful trick where a rose bush would bloom right in front of your eye. But it was his production of a butterfly that was the most beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, the creation of light. When asked about deception, he said this. Magic is the only honest profession. A magician promises to deceive you, and he does. I like to think of myself as an honest magician. I use a lot of tricks, which means that sometimes I have to lie. Now, I feel bad about that, but people lie every day. Hold on. Hey, where are you? I'm stuck in traffic. I'll be there soon. You've all done it. I'll be ready in just a minute, darling. It's just what I've always wanted. You're great. Deception. It's a fundamental part of life. Now, polls show that men tell twice as many lies as women, assuming the woman they ask told the truth. <laughs> we deceive to gain advantage and to hide our weakness. The Chinese channel Shun Tzu said that all war was based on deception. Oscar Wilde said the same thing of Roman. Some people deceive for money. Let's play a game. Three cards, three chances. One five will get you ten, ten will get you twenty. Now, where's the lady? Where is the queen? This one? Sorry. You lose. Well, <laughs> I didn't deceive you. You deceive yourself. Self deception. That's when we convince ourselves that a lie is the truth. Sometimes it's hard to tell the truth. Composite gamblers are experts in self-deception. They believe they can win. They forget the times they lose. The brain is very good at forgetting. Bad experiences are quickly forgotten. Bad experiences quickly disappear. Which is why in this vast and lonely cosmos, we are so wonderfully optimistic. Our self-deception becomes a positive illusion. Why movies are able to take us onto extraordinary adventures. Why we believe Romeo when he says he loves Juliet. And why single notes of music, when played together, become a sonata and conjure up meaning. That's Claire de Lune. Its composer, quote, Debussy, said that art was the greatest deception of all. Art is a deception that creates real emotion, a lie that creates a truth. And when you give yourself over to that deception, it becomes magic. So let's think about this together. Marco Tempest, 
put on an amazing show using technologies in ways that perhaps we never even thought they could be used. iPods, he said, that he borrowed from three people in the audience. So as you think back on that five-minute TED Talk, what stands out for you? Is it Tempest's use of technologies? Or was it his message about deception, self-deception, art as deception? When I've played this video and asked my students here at the College of William and Mary the same question, most of them were able to produce the thesis that Marco Tempest shared, the thesis about deception and that magic is deception, but magicians are honest because they tell you that they are going to deceive you. Most of my students here, though, agree, as I suspect that you do, that the point, the learning that Tempest seems to want us to have done as a result of observing and listening to that talk, though, really doesn't emphasize his ideas about deception. Instead, as one of my students said just a few days ago, Mr. Tempest seems to want to convince us of his skill as a technology using magician. So what does this suggest? 